What you're about to watch is a coaching session I did using the site Medify. If you're interested in some Splatoon coaching of your own, feel free to check out my link in the description below. And with that, let's just get started. So, is there anything you want to mention before I start this? Any, like, background information or what we're going to be watching? Um, I don't know if it's important, but, like, three of the people Crisis is going to be playing with are not on the team anymore. <laughs> oh, that's not a big deal. Anything else or just that? I think uh, that's it. Just... Huh? Let's get right. started. I'll tell everyone special. Alright, so uh, they have armor, they have uh, missiles, they have uh, ray and... Armor is such a really good combo. Yeah. yeah. So... Right away, yeah, playing and trying to pop is the smart move, because your team, at the start of every match, you should be evaluating not only just the specials, but in Rainmaker, especially the subs that they have, and the mains, for the ability to pop the Rainmaker fast. Getting the pop is, first is pretty vital in a lot of maps, and Black Valley is definitely one of the ones where the amount of paint you get from it is significant. Mm -hmm. Counter Ray was good. Good. Now would be the time to push ahead of the Rainmaker. Coordinating who gets the Rainmaker who's going to be picking it up is important as well. That way, when you have someone like right now who is playing this far forward already, she could just continue to move forward instead of having to do what they did there where they backed up towards the, the Rainmaker. Like, uh, where is it? So, like, Right here, now that someone, after this H3 dies, now should be the time to move up instead of backing up here to get the Rainmaker. Playing slow because all they're doing is spamming bombs, good. Saying missile 3 doesn't really contribute anything. You should be calling out who it is and where they're sitting at. You get the information of where they're standing. So saying how many you're missling is like a worthless call. There's no point in saying something like that. You should always be using it to tell your teammates where they are, not how many are being missled. Oh, we can't hear the audio, by the way. Let's see. I wonder if it's because oh, it's, I wonder if it's actually because I have the audio super low on my end um, if you hear I'm just going to play it for a second at full volume on my end tell me if you can hear it how much was your how very kind okay yeah it's just because I have the audio um, playing very low on my end so I can still hear you guys that's probably why but um yeah, you mentioned that if somebody said they were missling three, that sort of call is completely worthless. Those You should always be saying where the enemy is because you can see where they're at. Even if you can't give like a precise call out for where they're sitting, just being able to say how f like far or close somebody is who's being missled is a much more worthwhile call than just how many people are being missled. That contributes nothing. You might as well just not be saying anything at that point. Because it makes no difference how many people are being shot at by it. Kind of them. They're gonna make a better counter push. Yeah. We just have to try and. Uh, I'll stall it with missiles. At this point, with how many of you are here, this would be the good time to armor and drop like that. Uh, don't push it alone. Though. Should definitely push the H3 here. Even with both of you having armor, the H3 has to do a lot more than you to be able to get that kill. How? I don't know how. They have to be able to land every single one of their shots to be able to, be able to win that fight. So it's something like the end zap that has a much faster fire rate. You're you're more likely to come out of that fight with the win. Watch out, bomb. Uh. Oh, oh yes. I don't care. They both have their specials. Be careful. I got the squid bag then. Yeah. And a squid bag. 
That really was so fucking bad. That was so close. Oh, I got the three paint. The three paint is gone. I'm for it. All right, their armors are gone. Nice. nice. Be and try to just back up. Try to just hold Sorry. mid. You don't have to retreat all the way back, but you just want to stay closer to the, uh, stay close to the rainmaker. Stay close to a point where you can still hold control, like what you're doing now. This is the correct play. Just try and hold control, not give up all of the space on the map. I'm now would be a good time to armor and just go right back in. Whoa, that's a big radius. I got the one. All right, watch out. Yeah, just stall, stall, stall. Wait, you should be uh, not. You should not be head. over. You should not be going in that far, Vev. Yeah, right. that going that far is uh, questionable, especially because you're a splat line. Oh, got the got the slash. Left now would be a good time to just start pushing forward. They have two down. Knowing how many people they have alive is important. Two, One of you is calling out how many people, like how many people have their special. Thing. I think what you I should be doing missile. is, in like, it's okay to be calling something like that. Right that way thing. you can um, keep attention away from Fish like people having to constantly look up to see. But you should definitely should also be saying how many people are alive no, because gonna. that's also uh, that's arguably more important. One there are going to be some people who don't actually pay attention to how many things are up top. And there may be people who may not push because they think that there's more people alive and may just be more super focused on the match itself. So if you have somebody who's sitting back and making calls like how many specials they have, you should also be using that opportunity to be like, there's two down, uh, we're two down, uh, they only have one person up. Uh, that way people like you know a backliner may be um, not paying attention to how many people are alive can hear, oh, three of them are down. Okay, now it's safe for me to just keep moving up. Those sorts of calls mm -hmm. are almost, I almost never hear those sorts of calls. I will watch a lot of people play. Um, and it's very uncommon for people to remind yeah, I mean, the teammates of how many people are exactly They're alive. Rain. That plays a big factor into, especially frontliners and like slayers who really want to try and push their advantage and oh, knowing yes. how many people oh, yeah. they have that are I, currently I got, in their way the is really important just, uh, so just reiterating uh, how many people so there are the right now there's two down one is just now that coming back in one. so this would be the perfect I, time to I just drop down got three. Um, now they're all wiped that would have been a good call to say all I down we can push up all right, I have missiles for when they try and counter push speaking of which missile the one that was trying to counter push Thing like right there, saying I'm uh, missing the one who's trying to counter push. That would have been a good opportunity to yeah, tell really nice where exactly they're pushing from, where they're moving to. If there was like somebody trying to go down your half pipe, say missing the guy who's going half pipe, and especially because it also still shows you a bit as they continue to move, you can continue to inform your teammates where they're right going. Now. Got two, got them both. Mm -hmm. Nice. So there's go. two down. Oh now God. would be a good time to just run at the rainmaker. Nice. Oh my god, I got nice. a double kill. I got so overall, kills, I like, think that was played yeah. pretty well. There, It's not often I hear people mention how many specials there are on the enemy team. That's a unique one, because most of the time people will glance up quickly and see um, that the enemy has some form of special. I would definitely do suggest focusing and trying to learn about how making calls for how many people are alive. Um, and then it would probably be checking and oh, taking advantage okay. of oh, any situation where have, you have uh, more people like yeah, that. The, uh, any In this game, any sort of advantage you have is your excuse to move. Even if they only have one person I'm down, down that is a huge advantage on your part. And should be used like, as like, a way to make room. One of us probably, like, three there, so one down. Now this is the... Your moment to just go. Should just be holding forward and going at them. Got one. Now would be a time to take the rainmaker, have someone move up. Uh, missling. Yeah, now they're all wiped. Now this would be. Yep. Again, a little bit of a hesitation. You should continue to just hold forward. This is where it's really important to designate who's grabbing it or have someone say, I'm getting rainmaker. That way, other people know that they just need to keep moving forward. Right, there, probably the, the call could have been made that they oh, needed yeah, some yeah, help. Yeah, yeah, um, no. That way you can draw attention. That way people know where you need, what's yeah. going on. No. The game just started, Mom. 
even if it takes a little bit of time for you to make that sort of call, like, um, need help with their spawn, the or need help in their half pipe, something like that. And if someone can or can't make that, like, can't assist, then you can just make a quick call, like, can't help, not there, things like that. We might lose the lead here. Alright, they got the range. Nice. Ronnie. Mm -hmm. Wait, please don't. I'm Rainmaker's alone, so that's. That would be a, a good, you were doing the correct thing of running the Rainmaker that's alone. This will suck for us in the middle of an important tournament. Oh, my ass. Wait, you said no? I thought you said dad isn't here. Letting it reset like, like that can be a little dangerous. If the enemy like has people that are closer to the, the mid, or where the Rainmaker resets, it can be dangerous to let reset like that. It can sometimes just be better to pick it up in a, a spot right, that's not out. very uh, favorable to you, or a spot that you're not going to push, just so it's less likely for the enemy to get control of it. Right there, you can make a call that you're even, that way people like this and that will know that they can still continue to fight because the fights are still right, even. Right. What did we go for? I feel like this stole. Mm -hmm. Stole. I mean, yeah. yeah, can you, uh... Yeah, there's a call to, make, uh, or, to I, stall. I you just hold control what you have. Now would be two a good down. time to be yeah, right pressure, there. So, so yeah. right there is yes, a good sorry. example. Saying two down. Oh, These are the sorts of calls that should be made yeah, pretty yeah. often. If yes, someone's going to be monitoring specials, yeah, yeah. someone should also we, be monitoring how many people are up. I saw that. So. I got one. I got two. So that's two down. Thank now you. there's only one up. I got him with an insane hole. Okay. Now would be the time to move Missile forward. Two. I'm flanking the half pipe. Good. In this sort of comp, you would probably want to not be the one that picks up the Rainmaker. You have two right, uh, weapons yeah, that are essentially yeah, a backliner. Yeah, it's okay it's that the jet line. didn't get it because the jet has Stingray, so it's nice. a smart move for the jet to I, not pick the Rainmaker. Pick but having the Dooley Squelcher take it would probably be more advantageous than having you take it. Because you're a better frontliner in a small, okay. confined space that Black Belly is going to be calm, mm -hmm. especially during this push. <laughs> nice. Oh, Alright, they got me. Alright, uh, we should have time to stall them. Yeah. It's reset, we should have time to stall them. Put up phone. Wait. And bombing Rainmaker. They can't do anything. They bombed right on. They all pulled. I'm jumping out. Bombs on them. I'm back. I can't find them. Oh, okay. They're rushing in. Damn it! I there's. Here you really don't need to push nice, into nice, them. Nice. They have to push at you. Just wait. Nice. Uh, Watch out for the CDS. It's Rainmaker. Rainmaker. I miss it. Yeah. Another thing I've noticed is that when you, I, there hasn't been very many callouts in regards to where people like the enemy are, if you have your eyes on people, you should be telling each other where they are. That way nobody gets caught off guard. I don't really hear a lot of calls like that. I don't hear many people saying where they're seeing the enemy. I just that people see an enemy. They're not making call outs to where they're at. I have armor. Off your head. I tried to go to the gate. There's someone on left, so I can uh, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now would, would be the left time left. to back out. You have two, two down and you're uh, splatling. Okay. That, that's okay. a good example of why being aware of how many people are up is important. Nice, nice where something like what you're playing is so position based that 
if you just you don't know, you have no coverage, then you can just get caught That's out immediately okay. and have no idea what happened okay. to you. I have me some. Um, have them. I missed three. 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 But not everybody is actively paying attention in the same direction, especially when you're a backliner and there may be someone who's in the front line not paying too much attention. I died, I died. Okay. That would be backing up. Nice, nice. Even if you have to jump out, that's the correct play. Yes. There are two people rushing you, there's very little chance of it just somehow clutching it out of nowhere. Someone should be going further up from here. Yeah, like the ends up here. Or the uh, splatter shot. Fall back, fall back, fall back. I miss it. Yeah. I got one. Nice. Nice. Okay. It also makes it easier if you can't really feel like you can't make like a, an effective call out. When you have a point sensor, if you see oh, someone like that, you can just throw Thank a point you. sensor at them. Fall back, fall back. Yeah. Be careful, babe. I almost have all We're two down, we're two down. Just, we should go, just go, just go back. There. That's that's the kind of call you want to hear. Two down, back up. I have armor. Those are the blue, appropriate types of calls you need to be making more often. That's nice several. Playing Booyah? Okay. Okay. There's a call in, in our flat, in our flat. I'm going to say two. I got you. Oh, nice! <laughs> that was so fast! Machine is alright. Here. <laughs> so definitely be using your point sensors more often, especially when you're in the disadvantage. You have no idea where the enemy team is, or they're trying to position, or they're trying to move up from. Using your um, oh, the point sensors yeah. definitely makes it easier to figure out where you can and can't go. Look over this. Uh... Yeah. So right now they have two down, but nobody seemed to be moving because I wonder how many people are actually aware okay. of how many yeah, that one's really up rough. you were. Okay. That would have been the perfect time to start to move down. Nice that way you can deny the enemy jumps back in the mid. Even if they only have two down, if you aren't moving towards them and chasing them out, then they can provide jumps to the people that are responding. Okay. That's why just pushing your advantage is super important. Nice. Is any any number you have up over the enemy is your opportunity to just start to push them further and further okay. back. You want to... The whole point is, of this game is One to is take space. Um, space being the map itself. Mm, you should be it. constantly denying okay. space or the map as much as you can at any chance oh, nice. to have. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I think that's oh, good. yeah. Are you that, bro? How are you still alive? Oh my god, I miss. Okay, careful. I shouldn't Watch have Watch out for Booyah. Back, I have no answers. I save it. Slash and left mid on my ass. Oh. See, those are the types of calls that I'm surprised I don't hear a lot more. Where <gasps> the sloshing machine was actively called out with a location. Oh my god. Those are the types of calls that need to happen more often, and not just when you're dead, when you see somebody in general. Two down, two down. Nice, two down. One is looking me. It's definitely very clear to me that a lot of what needs to be worked on across the board, it doesn't matter if the people, uh, the rest of the people are on a team or not. Callouts are super important, and knowing what is and isn't a worthwhile callout 
is what really makes the difference between um, being like a mid-level player and a high-level player. The high-level players do a lot more calling of the important information, things like where people are positioned and things of that nature. It's not very helpful to have calls like, well, earlier where we were just saying how many people are being missiled. If you go watch any super high-level team, instead of saying how many people are being missiled, they're actively calling where the people that are being missiled are and where they're going. Using like the the information aspect is so important um, because of how easy it is to hide in the scheme. If you know where people are moving and where people are hiding, where they're going, it's a lot easier to take advantage of every situation you have. And it's something I've noticed across years of playing and watching both games is that the importance of information and the callouts has. It's always been the same between going from the lower level teams all the way up is how much they value the information itself and the call out like the difference in call outs. Um, I remember back in like early Splatoon 1 where there was like this really high level team that was essentially always they were always talking. Every single thing that was coming out of their mouth was a call out and people used to laugh at them and make fun of how much they were talking and make it seem like they were like sweaty tryhards but that's the sort of stuff you want to do that's what like every high level esport is like the people are constantly making calls unless it's a game that are like slower paced um, most of the time teams are always talking about who the focus is what the focus is where people are where they're at what the plan is it's always constant constant information because you need to have to constantly balance um, a stream of knowledge and things that you need to do. So being able to effectively provide that is important in improving. And learning that is a fairly simple thing and it boils down to just knowing what you need to say and when you need to say things. If you feel like what you're going to say doesn't contribute in any way, it probably isn't a worthwhile thing to mention. Um, uh, a very common one is when people complain about how they die. Oh, like, oh, that guy shot me around a corner. Worthless information. Does nothing. Those sorts of calls, those sorts of things in general don't need to be said. You just focus on who it was that killed you and where they're moving because you can see that. Um, that's one of the big things I'm really noticing is um, just calls. And it's, the nice thing is that's very easy to work on. It's very simple to improve calling and shout like call outs and things like that very simple and easy to improve and one thing you can do that I even do is when you're playing solo to still make those sorts of things to yourself um, which may make it sound like I'm crazy um, but that's actually what I've always done is essentially talk myself through the games even if there's no one there to listen to what I'm saying and that even boils down to walking myself through my actions and the things that led to, like, if I died. Well, I would reassess why I did that or what happened. Um, and that improves things like um, map knowledge and game sense, is learning what you do that contributes to something being effective or ineffective. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a rant. Let's continue going. <laughs> What? Why? Because I'm trying to win the game. I wanna hate this fucking game. I cannot. I'm having this one three right, three right, three right. Okay. 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 So in this sort of situation, you would definitely want to just keep building your armor. If you're the only armor weapon on your team, your goal should always be to have your armor going into mid. Your first rollout should always be just building armor. Even if it's not a fun thing to be an armor bot. But that's really how the game is played at this point. Is your role is super vital. Especially when you're playing against a comp like this. That they have... Well, you do a ton of damage, but there's a bit of a lag between their attacks. Having armor really makes it um, easier for you to always secure a win in a 1v1. Game. 
Um, 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 yeah. Jump out of the crisis. Nice, really nice. Thank you. I'm trying to find them. Yes, I'm okay. Yeah, I noticed that. I got two. Pretty nice. Um, how many misses are the last two? Right side or right side? So, see, I like right know. there, that was a I call that. You could have okay. made that there are people uh, on the right stack. Good, 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 good. I, I you can know. see them. You can see what they're doing. So you can make calls like that. And that way people that, like if someone else didn't make that call, then okay, they wouldn't have been, they couldn't have been caught off guard <laughs> while trying to move up there. I have one on our left stack, uh, explosion. Mm -hmm. Just do nothing. And those kinds of calls are what oh, I was talking okay. about earlier. The I can't do nothing. Those are the sorts of calls you want to avoid ever doing because it contributes nothing. Nice. And, well, it does contribute to something. It's called flooding comms. Um, basically providing useless information. Behind, behind. Hi. Got him. Nice. Yourself on two down. Yes. Yeah, that's already an improvement, just saying two down. Uh, try something in your basket. Or mid down. I got me. On this stack. I got me too. <laughs> Another uh, pretty important thing you'll see in higher level play in Clan Blitz is how few times players will just run around with a super clan. If there isn't a spot where you're in the advantage and can make a push, lots of higher level teams actually won't have a super clan, but they'll be close. What they'll do is actually they will sit at nine clans, and some teams and some players I've actually seen that will juggle ten, like pick up nine, and then as they're going to grab another one, throw one. That way they juggle around the clans that they have, to avoid having attention drawn to them. What happened here where you were just you were attacked because you had a super clan. Your the game is literally pointing you out at all points. So if you can just juggle nine instead of giving ten when there's no push occurring, there's no advantage here. I mean you could push, but if your team isn't ready to push, then having a super clan all it is is just assuring that you're gonna die pretty quickly or the attention is on you at this point. The enemy team sees you as the they think that you're in a position to do something so that they will go all guns blazing to get rid of you and you only. But if there is no super clan then they don't know who is close to it. So if you have like a team of everyone that has nine and everyone's just waiting for the moment to move and then all it takes is for one of you to throw a clan to the other and then the push begins. Nobody has any um, like targets on their back Nobody has any attention drawn to them, and this, the push can still start whenever you want. Where in the same case, the push can start, yes, at any point, but the problem is now you have a target on your back. There's a huge difference. Both can still st uh, start a push whenever, but one really draws attention to one player, while the other doesn't. Uh, try something. Stack. I got him too. <laughs> I'm sorry, Amy. Thank you. I think you need a play patiently when we push up next time and, and grind for specials. This one's moving on this left side. That one. Try next to our basket. Nice. Okay. Yeah, we have to we have to play it carefully this entire push. <sighs> okay. The use of the bubbles there was pretty questionable. Nobody was moving up with those. No one was trying to actually pop them. It's just a bomb next I'm in the race. Especially in clan blitz where using a bubble blower is like a free shield through a push. Those 
are super vital to making any sort of like good effective push but they shouldn't just have been thrown like that it's, you should be very conservative about when you use bubble blower in this mode use them with intent and make sure everybody's following them so right here is push this guy out Nice. Now would be a good time to push because there was actually a moment nice. where two people were down. Now is a good time to make a push happen. You're aware of where the tri slosher is. You can make the call out where they're standing. Yeah. At this point, there you could yeah, force the lead like that. And it's a little dangerous to do like that, but it's almost match over so it's fine it's understandable i'm standing bombs now it's really about playing defensive and what you can do and i've seen some players do is in close matches like this they will actively go and throw clams off the map uh, that way they can make sure that nobody's actually able to get a super clam <laughs> That match was definitely better in terms of hearing more calls being made by the people that were flying. Um, but it's still not enough. Um, that and also like the questionable use of specials. You, Despite how annoying their comp seemed, you were definitely in the advantage in this area, in this, again, in this match. Because really what it is is you have an end zap. Of course they have an armor too but you still your team will always win the fights purely off of how long it takes a slosher to kill they have they take more time to kill than most of the weapons on your team barring the squeezer so everything else on their team takes longer to kill so all it takes is one armor for your entire team to be almost guaranteed to win almost all those fights i guess fair hey guys um uh, what do they have Probably gonna run double armor. Um, uh, so they have armor, they have inkjet, missiles, and bomb rush. So. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I go fan, try and hold zone from fan. Also, at the start, saying what so specials they right? have in terms of There's like, like they have they have armor, right? they have a suction bomb rush, things like that. For a lot of players that know the weapons, there's really no need to call what exactly they have. Um, most people will be aware of what special they have purely off the weapon that they have. Wait! Oh, I just got I got destroyed. Oh, watch out! They're all kind of they're all in one spot. If you guys rush for them, yeah, watch out! A uh, K shot really weak. K shot super weak. Right there would have been a good moment to mention where they are. If they're all in one spot, yeah. where are they? They're all stuck in one spot. If you guys oh, they're all in one that, spot. Oh, they're on the they're on left people? fan. No, we'll then we'll you know where they're all at. Oh, missile two, one fan, one zone. Right, right there, that's a good call. Missiles are being used, and you were mentioning where they're moving, where they're at. One fan, one zone. And then as they continue to move, you can continue to, to mention where they're moving to. Missile 2. There's one zone. There's two zone, actually. That's it. Alright, one jumps out. We have the H3 on the on right. Trying to. Alright, split the gun. Watch out, crisis, crisis. Crisis. Yes. Guard ledge. Guard ledge, good. Behind you. What? Someone right behind you, crisis. Can someone try and help crisis? Okay, got me. To advantage, you should be pushing that guy that's just sitting there <laughs> on the left side. Down. I am, I'm bombing and see, not taking it, I'm not making use of your advantage allowed somebody to jump into their office like that. And now they're effectively back oh to God, an equal guys. fight just because uh, you didn't press your advantage. You can pinch him, come on, you're dead, yep. Nice. Gotta trade. Oh, oh. Weapons okay. like uh, chargers, you, know you have to do what's it's called disrespecting them. Uh, Assume it's that they're not going to land the shot. Just run at them. You need to chase those players down. Any sort of backliner like yeah. that has to really be careful about where they position themselves and into the fights they take uh, the because of how important they are. 
So if you don't show those types of weapons respect and just run at them as if they're going to miss you regard, like no matter what, then you're more likely to freak them out. Because they, what they want you to do is to be afraid of them. They want you to fear them. They want you to not approach them. So if you run at them and challenge them, then they're the ones that are more likely to back down. So in that situation, you'd probably want to rush the Squiffer to deny them position. Even if you feel like, oh, the Squiffer might kill me, but yeah, but the Squiffer might also run because you're coming after me. Oh, Squiffer got me. Squiffer left. Watch left, watch left. Yeah, what are your fight? Damn it. I, I couldn't get the H3. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There are H, H3, um, uh, H3 fan. H3 R fan. Abram, can you get him? No. Got one. Feel like right there. That, you can just run at that Squiffer. Because now the Squiffer is effectively... Like, like, they've given up on that fight. They missed their shots, so now they're just gonna run. Now in this situation, you want to run at that Squiffer. Not only do they have special, but they're alone. I have one. Nice. I'm trying to play. Kinda can't just ledge. Go from top left. Get got three missiles. Kill them. Nozzle's flanking right. on zone. Oh my god, oh my god, they pulled armor. A bit of a late call know. there to mention that someone was flanking. The moment you I'm, see someone I'm like dead. that, even if you're oh, in the middle of a fight, if you bring attention oh, to somebody like that, nice. then you're more likely to get assistance. I killed the flash, but it took them like five five seconds, but they still the registered. The bomb directed them. I'm gonna try and bomb them. I need a good spot to put my rush really soon. Oh wait, guys, guys, right now. Rush on zone, that's where we need it. We're all dead. <laughs> oh. No, we're gonna lose. No. Good job. I feel like we're actually good match for these people. GG. Okay. <laughs> so there, it's really. It just reminds me of earlier about pressing your advantage, and that boils down to how many people are aware of the advantage you have. There are several points here where most of you didn't even move up from the zone. The whole point is to deny them any sort of space closer to the point. So once you have control, you need to just keep pushing them back and back towards their spawn. I only saw that occur like once in this entire map. And that's a problem because you're just providing free jumps for them. It makes it easier for them to contest you and easier to get back to the zone. You need to make sure they have no opportunities to get close. Any sort of advantage you have, everyone should be moved up. Nobody should be sitting in zone, nobody should just be sitting back, unless they're a backliner. At no point should somebody be sitting at this point. Everyone, once you have the zone, should be further up. Should be taking advantage of any sort of space you have. Like here, at this point, one person can be watching for a flank, but everyone should be in office. Everyone should be making sure the enemy team is as close to their spawn as possible. You want to deny as much space as possible. You want to deny as much of the map as possible. You just need to make sure that there is no room for them to get in. But all throughout this map, every time you guys had control, almost all of you were just playing from the safety of the zone itself. And the enemy team, on the other hand, was almost always trying to push into your office once they had the point. They were playing from your fan, pushing up, trying to deny you space and see what happens. They, they end up winning. Of course, neither team really pushed too far, but still in ma it was points like this where they were two down the squiffer is the one that's alive and alone up there everybody everybody should be dogpiling on that player everyone should be taking this moment to move forward there's somebody obviously on the fan here trying to do just that but everyone here should be moving up barring maybe the splatling which can sit on one of the fans but everybody at any point in this match especially on this map should be pushed up with the advantage that you have Overall, across all of the matches I've seen, it really has been a matter of not knowing the advantage you have. And if you're playing in a team environment, that really boils down to how many people are aware of things like how many people are alive. 
um, I mentioned it multiple times already, um, calls like they have one down, two down, we're up, we're even, we're down. Things like that go a long way in really helping somebody understand the situation they're in. If nobody is focused at the top of the screen, everyone is so focused on taking fights or painting the map or anything like that, they may not be aware that you're in an advantage state and it can then move up. It's really important to dial into the calls that need to be made and the information that needs to be stated and then really understanding the, the general flow of a game. Knowing that when you have the advantage, you need to push that advantage. Any moment you have where you can outpaint them, that's a moment where you need to then do just that, outpaint them. Um, any sort of like high level team you see will always take even as much as one kill and go the distance with it. Because depending on, especially depending on the type of weapon that dies, it drastically drops the enemy's team's paint. If, say, they were playing a comp where they had, like, a junior, a junior does a really good job at painting the map. If the junior is the first one down, and the rest of their comps, like, a Splatling, an H3, a Slosher, or something like that, the junior was the primary painter in that comp. So they don't have paint. Their primary painter is gone. That And also their armor is gone. Most of the time they will try to surrender some of that space. A lot of teams will still try and take fights, especially higher level teams will hold their ground when things like that happen. But for the most part, when you have situations like that where the enemy team loses a primary painter, that is an, a huge advantage you need to take, well, advantage of. You need to constantly be forcing yourself into the enemy's face every moment you get a chance. Even if it costs you to lose somebody, if you kill somebody and you push up and one of you dies, well, then you're still even. Both teams have three players, so you can still keep fighting. But at that point, if you're pushing the enemy team, you're pushing them farther away, making it easier for you to have somebody who comes back. If you lose somebody, somebody can swim back from spawn or jump back in, and there they are again. The enemy team will have to keep surrendering space to you if you continue to push them with their advantage and which could result in them having to jump out themselves or lose more people. Um, so yeah, I would say pretty much after all this, I would say a lot of what needs to be improved are callouts um, and um, pressing your advantage, really knowing when it is the time for you to do something and when it's the time for you to not do something, when it is time to push, when it is time to retreat. Um, those are pretty much the the big points um, that I took away from all of this. Uh, do you have anything to say? Oh yeah, also if you um, if you keep pressing your advantage or you let the other team press their advantage, they're, they're painting more so they're gonna get specials faster. Yeah. Yeah. Even if like in some situations like if you were to push up and you were trying to like spawn camp them uh, I've seen people argue like, oh, if you just paint over their spawn, all they have to do is just sit and spawn and paint to get specials. Well, yeah, but that's also time they spend just sitting in spawn. The advantage, you want to push the advantage to always make sure you have that sp your specials. And if the enemy team is building specials in their spawn because you're pushing them that far, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're forcing the enemy team to use their specials to get out of spawn, then that makes it easy for your next push. They won't have something. If they have to armor so they can move out of their spawn point, well, then they don't have armor for an actual fight. Um, some teams will actually um, will bait the enemy team into doing something like that. So say I'm spawn camping an enemy team and they use armor to get out of spawn. Instead of continuing to fight, I just tell my old team to retreat and we all just back up. And then now the enemy team all has armor, but there's no one there to fight. So they just wasted armor. Things like that, it's it's like a, a mind game of trying to trick the enemy team into utilizing resources in a spot where they don't really need to or forcing them to use something where they feel like they have to to win the, the fight and then just giving up on it. 
you can have them use armor and then just back up. And then they would just waste it. Have them use Stingray, and then everyone disperses. And then they just wasted it. Have them use missiles, and now everyone just runs away. They wasted it. It's all about pushing the advantage um, and getting your specials. And then from there, if you, you can also um, decide if it's worth it. Um, is the enemy team's armors to get a spawn? Is it worth it for you to use your armor to fight them again? Or is it worth it to just back up and save it? The real, the main important part about it is just try, doing your best to make sure that the core point of the game is in your hands. You want to always have the map in your color. And any opportunity you can have to make it your color, that should be your opportunity to move forward. And that's something that I've seen um, across both games, just like lower level teams and mid level teams and even some high level teams don't really quite understand the importance of having the entirety of the map. That some focus on just the objective and having like just the zone. That hasn't happened really since like way back when Spot Zones first came out in the first game where teams would just sit in zone all match and don't move from there. We've definitely gone much, much farther from that. But yet I still see teams doing stuff like that, just playing around zone and never moving. That's that's definitely not how we play this game anymore. It's always about taking the fights you can win and taking the advantage when you have it. Yeah, I think that's, that's all I have for right now. That's the main reason why we were um, like getting whooped on by inks the second time we were streaming because they they were playing a lot smarter with their specials and positioning and like we weren't doing in this video they were like pressing their advantage at every moment that they could and that's yeah. the main reason why we lost uh, that stream uh, it's it's always about learning what you can do and sometimes I don't know how often teams do this anymore um, but one thing I would suggest for you is if you were playing in a scrim where your team does not perform very well what I would suggest is always reaching out to the other team and asking if they have any advice for you um, or if anything stood out to them um, back when I first started playing granted I started competing in this game back when competing first started teams were more open to telling each other where their mistakes were. Um, back then, it would be something like, oh, you you guys use bubbler when there was nobody around, or I saw you guys waste your crack in so many times, stuff like that. Teams were very open to expressing where they saw the flaws and what they could exploit. Um, granted, I haven't done any sort of real scrim in years, um, so I don't know how often teams are still willing to do that. Um, but it's definitely something to do. If you feel like you didn't perform very well, well, you can just reach out to the other team and ask them, hey, what stood out to you? What was something you guys noticed that we should improve on? Because the whole point of a scrim is to practice and learn. And if you're not using that to practice and learn, then you're not really doing anything and you're just wasting time. And then, of course, also, there's no winning or losing a scrim. It's all practice. Um, so... This is definitely what you're doing here, having like this, um, the footage is important. A lot of people don't try to evaluate their own mistakes or their own play by watching it back. Um, it's really something you can improve on just by watching yourself. And what I mentioned earlier about when I would play solo and like evaluate myself, um, things like that really define the type of player you are. If you can learn from your mis mistakes like that and figure out where you went wrong by watching yourself or talking yourself through it, then it's a lot easier for you to improve than somebody who dies and their response is always, oh, there was lag, or oh, they, they shot me around a corner, or oh, they just used their special. People who try to write off their mistakes as like not their fault when it could be clearly their fault. When it's something that can be fixed, it's something you should address. Um, and the players that can learn from their mistakes 
often do vastly better than the people that try to write off their mistakes. Anything else you want to add? Um, for me, of this vlog, no, but I don't know about Jesus. <laughs> I don't have anything to add. I think one of the things, and this is just like a small thing about like call outs, but whenever maybe pulling a special and saying where you're going to throw it, would it be helpful to say like who is damaged by the special so that they could rush them and where they are? Because I've done that once, but at the same time, like my teammates had never done anything for it. So I don't I don't hear many people doing callouts like that. And instead I just hear this person's over here, that person's over there, and not who is damaged by said thing. So I don't know if that would be helpful. Um, it's really not. And it's because um a lot of the specials there really isn't a way to tell that you're dealing damage. Um, especially something like say you throw an ink storm, you have no idea how damaged someone is in an ink storm. Um you could tell how damaged somebody is with a, like a stingray, by like um, for example. But the problem is with the way a stingray works, if there are two players stacked on each other and you're hitting both of those people, then it can be very too like it could be people that are too differently hurt. Um, one player could have half their health; the other could still have like ninety percent. Um, that's why you won't hear people mentioning how much damage they've done to somebody with their special is because it's like almost near impossible to track in a like in reality it's almost impossible to really tell how much damage you've done um the only reason you'll see you'll hear people make calls like somebody's one is purely off weapon damage like if i'm running a splatter shot pro and i hit someone twice well, the chances are anything else in the, in the entire game will one-shot them. So you can make a call like, oh, there's somebody's one. Um, but with specials, it's almost impossible to tell, really, just how much damage you're doing exactly. So that's why most times you won't hear somebody make any of those sorts of calls. Okay. I, do think yeah. it's, I do think it's helpful when you tell like us where you pop a special. Like that one time on Manta, you, you, I asked you where you were going to pop a yeah. And then I was able to tell where the enemy would flee, and I got a kill off of that because of that. Yeah, stuff like that, that's important. Um, especially with something like Booyah Bomb, where you're going to throw it, or where your intent is to throw it. You can say, mention stuff like that. That way you would say, like, um, on Manta, for example, if I were to Booyah Bomb, and I say I'm throwing it their zone, then you would know, okay, I don't need to really focus their zone because it's probably just going to get painted immediately. Let me shoot our zone instead. Things like that are important, or if you're going to have a baller, you're going to tell your teammates, um, like, if you're going to, like, I'm rushing zone with baller. Things like that. I'm throwing ink storm at zone. Stuff like that. Um, but some things are, you don't have to say, like, if they, if you're using a stingray and you're shooting tower, you don't really need to say you're shooting the tower. It's, well, they, your team can see that. Um, what you could do instead is, say something like i'm using stingray push tower um that way it still sort of conveys the idea that you're using it for the tower but it's informing your teammates that they should use that moment to then go towards the tower as well anything else to add that's all that I have. Same. <laughs>